Hello, and thank you for being a part of this training. My hope is to give the teachers, parents, and caregivers of young children a better understanding of how early literacy impacts future learning and development. In this session, we will introduce the concept of early childhood literacy and how it may be different from what you might expect. We will also discuss why it's so important for adults to focus on literacy and how they can build up literacy skills within young children. We will then talk about literacy centers, how they can be implemented and improved, and how literacy activities can be incorporated into other areas of learning within a home or classroom. Early childhood literacy can quickly be described as any sort of activity performed by a young child that is done with the purpose of developing language, reading, or writing skills. This definition might sound rather overwhelming for a lot of caregivers. You may be asking, what activities do I need to plan right now? Or you may start frantically Googling, best early literacy activities for my two-year-old. Rest assured, while early liter literacy is incredibly important, chances are you're already building the skills within your children or students without even trying. Perhaps an easier way to define early childhood literacy would be to say that it's what children know about reading and writing before they can actually read or write. It's all the actions, conversations, and experiences that color the path between babyhood and independent reading and writing. While it is true that teachers and parents are often building early literacy skills within young children without even realizing it, it is still important that literacy building activities be done thoughtfully and deliberately. Adults play a huge role in helping children develop lifelong success in reading, writing, comprehension, and overall success in school. This is because from the first day of a child's life, learning connections are being formed. In fact, 90% of these learning connections, which are critical points in a child's overall brain development, take place before age five. 90% before age five. This means that adults play an essential role in exposing children to meaningful literacy experiences while these critical connections in the brain are being made. Children who have adults in their lives that are consistently exposing them to meaningful literacy experiences will be more confident readers, eloquent speakers, proficient writers, and high achieving students. Literacy does not only impact how young children succeed academically, but also how they develop socially and emotionally. Early literacy experiences open doors to reveal how children feel about themselves and interact with others. Teachers, parents, and caregivers have wonderful opportunities to help develop a child's self-esteem and social-emotional awareness through literacy activities. When teachers and caregivers consistently facilitate literacy activities with a young child, that child is more likely to feel encouraged, supported, safe, and confident. That child is also more likely to ask questions, problem solve, and pursue reading as a recreational activity. And the world needs more kids that read for fun. So what exactly are the meaningful literacy experiences that can build a young child's brain and self-esteem. They're oftentimes very simple and are based around things that most caregivers of young children do anyway. They are purely talking, singing, rhyming, reading, and noticing. Talking. Speech is the aspect of communication that starts at birth. Through speaking, Children learn their spoken language and begin making connections between words and objects, people and ideas. 
The more adults can speak to young children, the better. And this can start from day one. Singing, rhyming. Singing and rhyming are experiences that are important for young children because they help children hear sounds within words. Children also enjoy the pleasing rhythm of songs and rhymes, and this rhythm helps them remember many new words and sounds. These experiences allow children to hear an adult's voice in a supportive way, which nurtures the caregiver-child relationship. Reading. Simply put, reading is the most important thing adults can do to develop essential literacy skills in young children. As little as 15 minutes per day of time with books can produce immeasurable results. When children are exposed to books, even from birth, they become more excited about learning to read and are better prepared to read in the future. Noticing. This refers to noticing print. Print is everywhere, and when adults take the time to notice it and point it out to young children, they are teaching them that print holds meaningful and is useful to people and to the world. So talking, singing, rhyming, reading, and noticing are how literacy skills are built, and there are very practical ways to execute these simple experiences within a home or classroom. Try these with your students or your own young children. Have books available for children to look at during unstructured time. Make them available on a child's level if possible so they can explore independently or with an adult. Label things in the children's environment so they get used to seeing print. This also helps them see that printed words represent things in their lives. Once you've read a book to a child, talk about it. For nonverbal children, you can simply talk about the book's characters, colors, or story, i.e., that story was about a cow. A cow says moo. For older children, ask, tell me questions like, tell me your favorite part of the story, or tell me what you noticed at the end of the book. Using tell me prevents one-word answers and opens up a better dialogue about the book. Sing songs and recite nursery rhymes together and repeat them regularly so children can learn them quickly, then join in with you. Let children see you using books and print yourself. Let them see you reading books, the mail or the newspaper. Let them see you, and help you if they're able, making lists writing letters or making notes in a calendar. Allow children to make up their own stories and take the time to listen to them uninterrupted. Ask the child questions about their story and ask them if they'd like to learn more about a certain part of the story. This opens up two-way communication and helps the caregiver gauge the child's developing interests. Consider, considering how literacy skills are built, and taking time to deliberately help children develop them will create amazing learning opportunities. And, as we discussed, many of these opportunities can take place spontaneously during the course of daily life. But young children also learn and grow from structured learning experiences where literacy activities take place within a more planned environment. Because of this, we will now discuss the importance of literacy centers. Literacy centers simply are physical spaces designed specifically to develop early literacy skills. Centers are deliberately set up to provide appropriate materials to help students explore literacy alone or with a few other children. A literacy center can be portable, temporary, or permanent, but should not be too large. Experts agree that no more than three or four students should explore a literacy center at one time. This is so students can be focused on exploring, discovering, and creating. Early childhood classrooms, child care facilities, 
and even homes can incorporate literacy centers to promote early literacy skills. Literacy centers should be designed with the intent to inspire children to explore a variety of materials to help them with reading, writing, encouraging language development, and seeing themselves as readers and writers. As we touched on before, literacy centers also hold the power to help young children build social-emotional competencies. In their 1998 study, researchers Harvey Daniels and Marilyn Bizar found that effectively organized and utilized literacy centers don't just build reading and writing skills. In addition, they help students make more effective choices, work better with their peers, and become motivated to learn more. This means that literacy centers serve many essential purposes for children to develop academically, socially, and emotionally. Literacy centers can be organized and managed in endless ways. They can be created by simply setting out activities on the floor or a table, or as designated in an area of a home or classroom. While the physical location of literacy centers can be fairly flexible, caregivers should keep several considerations in mind when deciding where to place it. Keep the numbers low. As mentioned earlier, no more than three or four students should use the literacy center at one time. Creating a literacy center in a very large space that could accommodate more students may not be the best option. A cozy corner of a room or a small table, separated from busier areas of a home or classroom, are typically good locations. Noise level. Literacy centers should be located in a relatively quiet area so children and adults can communicate, listen, sing quiet songs, perform rhymes, and concentrate on books. If setting up a literacy center in a classroom, consider putting it next to another area of exploration that is also relatively quiet, like an art center or a technology center. Furnishings. The literacy center should be set up so children can be comfortable. For very young children, such as babies and toddlers, the center could include soft rugs for children and adults to sit and explore together, or comfortable chairs so adults can sit with children to read. Soft items, pillows, and stuffed animals can also be included to create a cozier atmosphere. In addition to soft items, older children should also be given space to practice writing or creating their own stories. So desks, tables, chairs should be available. If possible, try to keep books displayed on the child's level so they can select their own books to explore. Shelves or displays that allow children to see the book covers have also been shown to better engage them in exploring books and reading. You can consider adding a display board in the center to post any work students create in the Literacy Center. Their own books, their own drawings of a particular story, or writing achievements. Book collection. A high quality book collection that is age appropriate for the children in your care is an essential component of a Literacy Center. A variety of books that include picture books, poetry, story books, and nonfiction books that reflect the interests, experiences, and backgrounds of the children in your care should be included. For older children, read-along audiobooks are another great option to help children develop independence and a positive relationship with reading. Variety is essential. Books should represent families, communities, childhood experiences, nature, and diversity. Be sure to also include books that are related to any specific topics or projects that you may be exploring in the classroom or home. Babies and toddlers specifically like board books with simple stories and thick pages they can feel and turn. Books with photos of familiar things like babies, clothing, 
everyday objects and toys. Books with photos of children doing familiar things like eating, sleeping, or playing. Books with simple words and pleasing rhythms. Books of varying textures like cloth or vinyl. Preschoolers specifically like books with repetition or books involving action. Stories about children their own age. Memorable rhyming books. Books depicting real-life stories oh, about animals, tractors, firefighters, the seasons, things like that. Books using illustrations or photos to help tell the story. Stories that can be read in 5 to 10 minutes with just a few lines per page. Supplemental materials. Keep posters of the alphabet children's names and basic words or sentences close to the literacy area. Materials that encourage children to engage in building literacy skills can also be included in your center. For very young children, these can be formed in alphabet shapes, blocks, flashcards, language photo cards, and puzzles. You might consider adding braille cards or similar materials with words in Spanish, French, or another language spoken in your community. For older children, adults may consider adding writing materials, paper, pencils, markers, stamps, stickers, and fasteners, so children can practice their own writing skills and try creating their own books. While older children can use literacy centers independently, adults should not leave them to their own devices. Adults play a huge role in introducing children to the literacy center, establishing guidelines for its use, observing children using the center, and evaluating the need for changes to facilitate better learning. Adults can use literacy centers to offer balanced instruction. Teachers and caregivers of older children who can use the center independently should be able to spend time working with the children using the center, but still be able to pull away to go to children working in another area. If you find that the literacy center isn't really striking this balance and that children using the area are reluctant to listen to instruction, make some adjustments. Try incorporating new activities that require more explanation from you. You can also create more structured yet open tasks. You can have children select any book of their choice and draw their favorite image from the book on a piece of paper or create a may do list to give children choices. Select three or four activities that you'd like to see children working on within the center. Then give them an opportunity to pick which ones they'd like to do. This allow ch allows children to focus on specific tasks while still having some freedom and flexibility. Activities like this, where the adult is providing structure but still giving children choices in how to accomplish a task, will help in getting children used to participating in more focused instruction within the center. If you're creating a new literacy center, or you're undergoing lots of changes to your current center, it's important to plan on how you're going to introduce or reintroduce it to, to the children. Take the time to explain what materials and activities are available, how they can choose activities, and what simple and understandable rules will apply. With older children, have them help you create a list of rules for the center. Although the rules should be simple and straightforward, it usually takes about two weeks of regular use for literacy centers to become a routine part of a child's day. But with patience, the transition should be fairly simple and exciting for the kids. When you're not directly working with children in the center, it's still important to set up systems to uh, for observation and evaluation. Having a notebook station near the center to write anecdotal notes about how children are responding to the environment will help you track student progress, 
evaluate the setup of the center, and document ideas for future changes. Literacy learning does not only take place in the Literacy Center. Because adults and children should be speaking, reading, singing, rhyming, and noticing throughout the day, incorporating literacy opportunities into other areas of a child's environment will encourage building these skills. Whether you work in a traditional classroom or are working with your own children in your home, you can try adding these elements to encourage reading and writing when you're participating in other learning activities. Blocks and building. Include books on building or architecture. Provide blueprints or create a blueprint book for students to sketch and design their creations. Dramatic play. If children are working with a specific theme, find print to correspond with it. For example, if children are investigating the zoo, provide tickets, maps, brochures, books on different animals, play money, snack stand, menus, and things of this nature. Sensory. The senses are their most basic and familiar way for young children to explore and process new information. When adults provide children with bins of sand, foam, play-doh, rice, or another material, they are encouraging multiple areas of developmental growth. During sensory play, you can have children search for letters, blocks, or magnets buried in the bins. Then practice identifying or matching them. Older children can search for the letters in their names or the letters to a simple word they've studied. Art. Provide books on art and artists for children to look at before they create their own works of art. If there is an easel in your classroom or home, post copies of famous works of art and the artists who created them. Provide labels for the colors of the paints children will use in the area. Science. Add nonfiction books to this area along with notebooks for children to write or draw their own observations when using science materials. Math. Add counting and shape books. Measure books with a ruler or count the number of books in a stack. Sing songs and recite rhymes with counting, like one, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish alive, and five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Now that you're aware of the importance of early literacy experiences and their impact on academic, social, and emotional development, it's time to brainstorm and plan. Ask yourself these questions. What activities am I now doing to encourage language development, reading, and writing skills? Are there times throughout the day to add more two-way communication, singing, rhyming, reading, and noticing print? Am I creating opportunities with books that allow children to feel encouraged, supported, safe, and confident? How can I design or revamp the Literacy Center? How can I add literacy experiences to other areas of the learning environment? If you work with a teaching team, get together and share your answers and make plans to take action. Start small with the goal of consistent improvement and don't try to implement all of your ideas at once. Just by gradually taking small steps to include more diverse book note choices or providing new materials in a literacy center, or simply singing more songs will compound and make a world of difference in the development of a young child. Thanks for taking the early childhood literacy training for teachers and caregivers with us. And come visit us at www.adventuresofscubajack.com. See you there!